Okay, I'm reloading Big Dappuccino here. And this is going to be a mail call gift box video. Uh, I received a gift box from Diecast Clown, Cardboard Garage. I don't think he uses Diecast Clown more. His channel used to be called Diecast Clown and Slash Cardboard Garage. But I think he's better known as Diecast Clown. And of course, you see his sticker on my turntable because he has given me um two customs of course we kind of had a back and forth of rapport ever since like i think it's been going on close to two years i can't believe that though but it's true i didn't know i did, i had been making videos for three years funny how time flies but um he won a contest that I had like a mainline contest I think that was about two years ago had to be when I started making videos he was one of the first winners him and uh, I know XLT off road bear and somebody else uh, later on it was Rudy Moons I think it was probably somebody else too but it was, um, but anyway, he gave me this first, this custom he gave me, Toyota Celica, uh, Hot Wheels casting, 70s. He repainted it. He did a whole bunch of, uh, custom work inside to the seats with that silver on the side. And some of the details in here, you really got to look. And he definitely did some work on the bottom. He did the tail lights and just the paint job itself. And then later on, I sent him a box in return and I asked him, could he fix this Ferrari that I had for a while? This Ferrari, uh, I think it's a three, is it three, four, five? Yeah, 365. Yeah, 365 uh, GTB4. And I had this for a while. In fact, I rescued it, I think, from my sister's house. My nephews, they had been, they had already went to video games. But I think they actually got this from one of their uncles. So, it was just sitting under the couch somewhere collecting dust. Somebody had... Uh, for actually, uh, stepped on it, I guess, and kind of bent it up a little bit on top. He fixed that out. He did the headlights, tail lights. Well, didn't he have to do too much of headlights, but repainted it because it was fading. Uh, put some real riders on the bad boy. I actually think these are green light wheels. I don't think these are hot wheels or some kind of aftermarket wheel, but um. Put another symbol on the back, another logo, Ferrari logo. These are brand new logos that he put up there after he repainted it and did the tail lights and wheels. And it looks awesome. So, so I sent him a gift box in return for doing that for me. Um, I think it was a green. It was a green machine in there because I promised the next. For doing an awesome job on the Ferrari. The next chase I found, I gave it to him. And it just so happened to be one with, uh, I think, a trailer. It had a trailer in it. I think it was El Camino, a trailer. And I might have had something else in there. Might have had another vehicle in there. I'm not sure. Might have had a truck. I'm not sure. Anyway. Hey, so he sent me this and return and we got the factory fresh Porsche 911 GT3 which I collect this casting I don't hide this color so it's pretty cool it come out 2021 but my target Walmart well, Walmart looks horrible I just went there like last week and they didn't have any 
round two models. No Johnny Lightning, no Auto World. They ain't have any M2. They don't need, look like they don't even stock it no more. No NASCAR authentics. I saw no Hot Wheel premiums or stuff for character cars, Disney, Pixar, and stuff like that. It's just full of monster truck stuff and car stuff and adventure for adventure force or whatever, which is Mesto. And next we got this uh Honda Civic Custom from HWJ Imports, which has real Sada name on it which is pretty cool i love custom hondas like this they could have put some tail lights on this and i never seen this cast and where i'm at so i'm way behind and it did come out in 2022 i haven't even seen this at target probably sure whoever saw them probably scooped up like two or three of them there's the JDM and Euro stuff goes pretty fast. Euro sports cars, the well-known ones. And he blessed me with two customs. First, we're going to do this one, which is a General Lee truck design, which is based on the GMC Cyclone casting from Hot Wheels. And a lot of you probably, I don't know, some of you probably be surprised. Be like, yeah, uh, General Lee, uh, aren't you African American? Uh, doesn't this offend you? Uh, I grew up on the Dukes of Hazard. Um, I actually had, well, a couple Dukes of Hazard toys I had to hide early on through trades with my friends that you do at school growing up and um actually me and my father we worked on a very detailed model of the general lee and uh i mean to the point of that you had to build a road cage the engine it had wires it had everything on it you know it's probably monogram or something it might have been one of them big Ravel or one of them, but it was the type you had to glue. Of course, my father, he was like, even though we used to watch Dukes of Hazard together, he was like, you're not going to put that flag on it. <laughs> it didn't bother me, but, you know, because he said it, I had to respect his wishes. But um, as far as the context of the show, the Rebel flag... It really doesn't bother me. Of course, you know, um, being that I am Virginian, I was born in Virginia. Um, I know the history. Robert E. Lee, who married the the granddaughter, yeah, the great granddaughter, I think, of George Washington. By marriage, it was really his wife's, Mary Todd's daughter, his daughter, yeah, I think something like that, daughter's daughter, but, um, yeah, I know all about Robert E. Lee, his love for Virginia. And this was actually, the Dukes of Hazard TV show was actually based on a movie. Most people don't know this. It's one of them grindhouse type movies from the 70s. Like Crazy Larry, Dirty Mary, and the original Gone of 60 Seconds. And um, what's the other one? Vanishing Point. It was like, it was basically like the other movie. I don't know if you know, like Gator. That's basically was before Smokey and the Bandit and all that. And it was based on the true life of a moon shine runner. It was called the Moon Runners in 1975. So it's pretty cool, man. 
If you're trying to find an authentic General Lee, I think Ertl was the last one who had the casting. I think Johnny Lightning might have had it at one time too. But those cards will cost you at least thirty to fifty dollars, if not more, because they're not in circulation, not being sold by um, secondary like hobby shops or something like that. It's not something you regularly see. If people got them, they got them in their inventory and they hoard them. So. I know I've been looking for something for the last few years. If I get a chance, I have a donor car that I would like to turn into a General Lee. Probably be this one. I'm not sacrificing one of my fist Fast and the Furious chargers like this. Probably something like this Hot Wheels. And I think I have a Maisto one too. I would sacrifice one of these, put some de hit some decals put on it. Try to find some wheels similar. This is a hot wheel. This could actually open some of this. But, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm a Duke some hazard <clears throat> Fishiano. So I'm happy to have this. So probably shouldn't say what I said, but that's just in case somebody wondered why, you know. Or had any questions the tail lights on this is done headlights are done this is custom wheel slot he did imagine if this was like this this probably like something they would use because i was always wondering how come they only had one car my people didn't know they were trying to replace the General Lee, the actual Charger, with a car Daisy had. I think she had like a, a 74 uh, Roadrunner. And they were trying to replace it with that, but they ultimately got rid of that car. Because it went to, I think, the character Enos. He had a spinoff show, and he left with the car. He never came back. They never explained it, but oh, but next we got this uh Camaro that he did another custom job by Diecast Clown, and he actually asked my input on what vinyl I wanted up there, and he had a choice of the Venom or the Ghostbuster. I decided to go with the Ghostbuster symbol, and it looks tight. He did right with the wheels; it matches up perfectly. Then he got this yellow right here to break it up. Got some red vinyls right there. So and some matte, like a matte black. Look like it's already, but it adds to the mystique. And this look like something like a like a um shouldn't say like a run like a kind of like a um i don't know but it's definitely a custom car I'm thinking like a drag good drag racer project car the ghostbuster you know you ghosting you falling behind somebody but this thing all you're gonna get is dust man this is cool I like that the tail lights is done on this. It didn't fit the whole car, man. It's simple, but it's done well. And I want to thank Diecast Clown for his creativity and his generosity. And I'm very appreciative of having these customs in my collection. So now I have four customs. And. To me, customs are, at this point, better than super treasure hunts. Because you got super treasure hunts that don't even have... There's a super treasure hunt. As you can see, it doesn't even have headlight tails like details. just has the special flame paint and real riders. And I hate to say it, 
even on some RLC models, you'll have that. It might have opening features and stuff, but you may not have headlights and taillights. And their whole thing is all about this right here, or all about, you know, whatever, you know. Just having that, I guess, that exclusivity, and everybody wants to have super treasure hunts. They don't even appreciate regulars like they do. You get a regular and so much to the point where people are going around in videos to different stores just hoarding super treasure hunts. And sometimes, I mean, I understand going after chases, but, and I own probably like, I think I own like five super treasure hunts. That I found. I never bought in any of my super treasure hunts. And I think I own like maybe six regular treasure hunts that I found. One was given to me. Um, and then I have these Hot Wheels ID. <clears throat> I have like, I think four, maybe four of these or four, four or five of these. I'm not sure. And this is the only uh, Zaymac I own. And I was lucky to find this one. So, that's from the 50th anniversary. So, you know, that was back in 2018. So. That's pretty much it, man. Yeah, this has been a gift box video. I got a lot of content I'm working on right now. Um, probably post up. I got a show and tell video I need to do. And I have some other content I'm working on. Kind of like another showcase videos. But I want to thank all the subscribers for holding me down. Peace and blessings uh, to the new viewers who happen to find this video like i always say this is not the best diecast channel it's not the worst either model here show a little love for the diecast hope you're encouraged to hit the subscribe button and the notification button leave a like leave a reply behind because i love to get feedback in order to get you know it's good to get a kind of rapport going and just to see what you're feeling thank you for your uh time peace and blessings